WBAY TV, your first alert station. Action 2 News this morning live stream starts now. Hey there, good morning. How you doing on this Thursday? Great to have you with us here, Joni West, for our post show. Action 2 News this morning live stream. I'm Tammy Elliott. And I'm Emerson Lehman. Great to have you with us for the next 15 minutes or so as we take a deeper dive in today's big topics. And one topic that we've all been talking about this week, along with the cold, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but the Packers just two days until the big yes. playoff game. So much buildup for this, and we are super excited. And we've been talking with Emily this morning out at Austin Straubel Airport. And we know that there are Packers fans who want to head out. What are you noticing out there this morning, Emily? Well, Tammy Emerson, let me be the first one to tell you there is a lot of Packers pride in this airport today. Folks wearing their green and gold. Even when I ask them if they're going to the game, they're not, but they still want to represent their favorite team. So the energy is great here at Austin Straubel. I imagine the same at Appleton International. And you can see here behind me, it's not too busy right now. So anyone actually going to the game can zip right through bag check, zip right through security and get to their gate. Also, not too many delays today. So that's a great sign for anyone heading to California. And it's coming through. They've got the employees at the Delta Gate. They, they're all ready, uh, ready to cheer on the pack this weekend. Right, there's actually, uh, you can see maybe behind me, a, a cheese head, a little Packers decoration. So they are all decorated at Delta, and they're ready for these fans to come in and get them to California successfully. And these tickets, they're pretty pricey. People are willing to pay to see the Packers play in the playoffs against the 49ers. A lot of them and that I'm seeing today, more than $1,000, all the way up to nearly $2,000. And you have to think, that doesn't include your hotel, that doesn't include your actual ticket to the game but when you're dedicated you're dedicated <laughs> yeah for sure we know that right well we appreciate you spending some time with us and checking that out and we'll say goodbye to you for now appreciate it Emily and want to talk about our weather obviously I think some people are thinking well yeah I'm gonna go to California watch that game get away from a little bit of the cold for a while escape the cold yeah. they're hoping for some sunshine but Steve <laughs> maybe not Maybe not. I, it looks like oh. it's going to rain during the Packers 49ers game, but a I, lot warmer still. At well, least. yeah. Would, nice. I, would you trade that <laughs> off? I think so. I think that's still worth <laughs> the trade. Would you rather have sunshine and around zero, or would you rather have rain and 58 Ooh. degrees? Uh, rain. You answer that rain one. and 58. Actually. What about I, you, Emerson? What do you want? I. I, for playing football or watching football, I think I'd take the warmer conditions. You would still. take the it's, warmer I've been at Lambeau and it's below zero. It's I suspect most of you would. Yeah. I mean, it's one right now in Green Bay. It's three right now in Appleton and Wapaka. And there's a little bit of wind. It's not overly blustery, but with that west wind coming in around five to ten miles an hour, our wind chills are mostly in the single digits below zero. But that said, the feels like temperature at the moment is 10 below both in Appleton and in Green Bay. And I do think later today our wind chills will be around and just above zero, actual high of 12. So we'll have some sunshine this morning, but I would look for some more clouds to arrive later in the day. Finally escaped the first alert weather day, right? right. We finally, we've been talking, it was like a first alert weather week, Steve, just so cold out there and just the, the couple temperatures that we had really warmed things up enough and uh, going to kind of continue over the next week or so, right? We're just beyond that point where frostbite is developing on exposed skin. So hmm. there's no need for that first alert weather day. There's no need for the Weather Service to issue a wind chill advisory. Uh, our chills will be getting above zero. Our uh, temperatures will be climbing into the low to mid teens as we go towards this afternoon. And this is just ahead of our next weather maker. It's a disturbance that's coming in tonight. It'll bring the state some light snow, but a lot of this is going to be passing to the south of Green Bay. In fact, our computer models that track, you know, how much snow we're going to get here in Tidaltown, most of them are not biting on this, although the NAM, which is called the North American model, says that we can get about an inch of snow. Now, the snow is breaking out across the Dakotas, back over towards Montana. The storm is tracking southeast not really heading directly at us. We're just getting kind of a, a taste of it tonight. First alert pinpoint predictor shows sunshine this morning, a few passing clouds, but more clouds later in the day. There's 4 p.m. And then once we get towards about 9 o'clock tonight, a lot of clouds. But where's all that snow? Well, mainly running through southern Wisconsin. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple flakes tomorrow as the wind comes in out of the north off of Lake Superior. But for the most part, the forecast is still looking mostly dry. 
We just need some of that chunky stuff to melt on the roads. I know that, so the, those temperatures are going to help out. I know we'll have a conversation with Catherine in a little bit. We need to get out there with a, with a little chisel to kind of. do you feel like that? <laughs> get yeah. out Bring there your shovel back, crew. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, I, I should say, guys, you know, for those who do love snow, you know, keep an eye on Monday night into Tuesday, there's a, a stronger storm system that's going to probably bring us accumulating snow, but it probably will switch over to a mix or rain as those temperatures next week get much warmer, climbing into the 30s. Mm. Going to be okay. a heat wave next yeah. week. <laughs> right. All right, Steve, thank you so much. We're going to turn our attention now to the first alert safety desk with Aisha Morales this morning. Challenges to not giving kids antibiotics, Aisha. Yeah, especially when they catch viral infections. So this morning we've been talking about this study. It's a conversation we've been talking about for years now, guys. We know that it's a worldwide issue. We've heard that doctors saying that antibiotic resistance threatens any progress that's been happening in the healthcare system because antibiotics just not, they're just not working in treating infections. They're not needed to treat a virus is something else we were talking about. So this was posted by the American Academy of Pediatrics in a study called Parent and Clinician Views on Not Using antibiotics for mild community acquired pneumonia. So they're just seeing some challenges basically between parents and doctors. Uh, a big conversation this morning for sure. Some of those concerns and obstacles listed in this new study, the American Academy of Pediatrics says, for doctors, they come across a lot of uncertainty by parents about any diagnosis when it comes to their kids, maybe fear of respiratory symptoms, most especially in the younger kiddos and the consequences of under treating a bacterial infection then on the other side parents AAP says can sometimes just disagree with the diagnosis they're worried that their kids are more sick than what a doctor is telling them that's a challenge that they face and they end up willing to accept the risks of those antibiotics and so we've been mentioning for years now how antibiotics um, can expose kids to severe reactions that's what doctors say complications and antibiotic resistance too yeah, and this is such a big conversation. And, and you know, as you said, you've been talking about it for years and, and kind of parents need to have that conversation with the doctor. And I, I know myself as a parent, I've said, I'm not here because I want antibiotics, mm -hmm. but I want, you know, we need to figure out kind of what's going on and what can I do better to help? I think that's that conversation you have to have with your doctor. You, you were saying it, every, every child's different. Yeah, exactly. That's a big conversation. That's a personal thing between your doctor and you talking about your child. So when it comes to those options parents have, that's the number one thing. And just making sure that um, you're talking to them and also differentiating between a virus and an infection mm -hmm. and all of that goes into it. So again, every kid is different. Um, this is all going to be posted at WVAY.com. Again, big conversation for parents this morning. Okay. Aisha, thank you. All right, talking now uh, about homeless in, in the area here. And this is such an important conversation because it, we know it's been bitter cold. Yeah, we've been tracking lots of different resources mm -hmm. all week for those who needed to escape the cold. And there's an organization that is uh, looking to count how many people are impacted by homelessness. Kristen Allen joining us live in our newsroom this morning. And Kristen, what's the, the point of this homeless count? Well, it's called the point in time count and it happens twice a year. So once in the winter at the end of January, once at the end of July, and it really gives a picture of how many people are homeless or living on the streets during the winter time. And then again, during the summer time. So what happens is uh, the Brown County Housing Coalition and housing coalitions across the state go out, they get volunteers and they will go out into counties and basically look for people who are living on the streets that may be literally living on the streets that could be living in their cars um, and they will attempt to talk to them. They will count them, of course, in this count, and get their demographic information and then try to give them resources as well and point them in the direc right direction um, for getting some help. And this is important because the number of people that they count directly impacts of federal funding that comes in to make sure that there are enough services and resources being offered in the state and in, in the individual counties. And they're, we're really talking about this today because they're looking for volunteers, right, to help out? Yeah, they need volunteers. So, of course, the more volunteers they can get, the more ground they can cover, the more people they can count, and the more money that they can get if, if it's, that's needed. So they need volunteers to go out and do this. If you want to volunteer, we do have a link on our website, WBAY.com. Uh, you will get training if you've never done it before. Um, and then you will also be paired with someone else who has done this before, so maybe has some more experience so it doesn't seem quite so intimidating important work going on especially like we said this time of the year with Absolutely. it being so cold out there yeah Kristen we appreciate it you following all those resources this week 
to help people with this cold. All right, we want to talk now with Catherine and First Alert Traffic. What's going on today? Hey guys, so just before our broadcast, Action 2 News this morning ended, I saw a crash on the north side of Appleton. It was in the northbound lanes of 41, right here near the Richmond Street exit, which is also Highway 47. A lot of people, I think, call it Richmond. And this is flowing along well now. They were able to clear that crash from the northbound lanes, so everything's flowing well. But I also, something else I want you guys to notice. Can you see this, this shot here? Look at the overpass. Mm, you see that, that along the edge there? Building up there, yeah. yeah. So, okay, we had all that snow come through <laughs> and, you know, crews pushed it out of the lanes it's go somewhere, of traffic, right? yeah. but yeah, it's gotta go somewhere. And that, we've all been talking about how we've been dealing with this. I was on Mason in Green Bay, which is a double lane mm -hmm. road. And I was on my way to work and there was a semi next to me and I thought in the left lane and I was in the right lane and I thought at a stoplight, oh, I could, I can go faster than the semi. So maybe I'll go in the right lane and, and go faster. And then I thought, I saw the snow bank mm. ahead of me and the lane was like this. And I was oh, like, no. I don't think I want to be between a semi and a snow bank. So the reason I bring this up is Tammy, you were talking about, and, and I've been seeing it too, crews, they pushed the snow away from the storm, but now they're working on actually moving it from those big hills right. that they have on the side of the road. So it, it, that hasn't been able to melt, of course, with the temperatures we've had. So they have to work on getting rid of it and they are starting to do that work which is good news for all of us who want a little more room. Yeah, they come in with their big trucks, they load it on and yeah. haul that snow away. I know it's like the post storm. The yeah, snow the post storm work, work. Right. exactly. Yeah. It's been so crazy too, just the amount of, you know, a lot of the yeah. residential and the side streets, mm -hmm. they're still just completely compacted and yeah. iced over, pretty, pretty rough because of just how cold it's been. They haven't been able to treat yeah. it at all. I think people just didn't realize how long that ice would stick around with these mm -hmm. temperatures because as I've been just, I feel like a broken record, but I've been saying this this week that salt and brine don't work as well in these low temperatures, but the temperatures are inching up so they'll start to melt some of that hard ice. Warming up ever so slightly. Right. All right, Catherine, thank you. Okay, we have something really fun. Before we go, it's that time of year again. Watch. News in the Bates household, Girl Scout cookies go on sale today the morning. <laughs> Love this great? story. Breaking news there from Kristen. And yeah. tell us about this. What you got creative with with this yeah, sale so Girl this year. Scouts, you know, this time of year, I'm sure you know a Girl Scout or two and they post, you know, videos on Facebook, you know, to try to get you to buy their cookies, <laughs> right? We're super obnoxious about it. And uh, this is our second year selling Girl Scout cookies. My first year being co-leader of the troop, I was oh. not a Girl Scout, so I'm okay. learning as I go. Yeah. It is, and you know, Bailey's a little shy, so I'm like, you know, what can I do to kind of prompt her instead of just saying, okay, Bailey, make a video. So <laughs> what else, but let's do a pretend live shot, and I'm gonna ask her questions and prompt her and <laughs> as we go. It was so cool, because you posted it, I, yeah. and, and we all On just, my personal page, yeah, yeah, and we loved it. We were like, Kristen, can we share it? We think people are gonna the love it. The bedazzled this. microphone yeah. and everything, yeah, it was yeah. perfect. Yeah, I didn't want to copyright the WBAY <laughs> brand or anything, so. <laughs> so what's the top seller? A thin Mints is just, world. I think, the top seller okay. all across, you know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah so. I got to put my order in yet, by the way. Yeah, I, and so. I, I put my order in yesterday, <laughs> yeah. and I always, I, I start small. Yeah. Uh -huh. I like one of each box that I enjoy, and then I end up, like, I'll go to the grocery store, and there's someone out there. Steve's <laughs> got the order right here. It's ready. You know what? It's not too late. You can do that you know right what? now. It's and we just, we're getting gluten-free now, too. We, of oh, course, yes. we didn't have them, That's but now they put important. it in order. So chocolate. Yes. Caramel chocolate chip is the gluten. Yes, because so, yeah. we have uh, I have celiac disease, so I yeah. need And that. we have a little Thank clip, you. another clip I think that they Let's are trying the to clip play. Here, yeah. <laughs> We're just talking too much. And who is this right here next to you? Uh, our cookie crew. The cookie crew. What is your name? <gasps> Brielle Cookie Crew. Brielle Cookie Crew. What kind of cookies are you selling? <gasps> Toasties. To toasties, is that your favorite? And cookies. And lots of cookies. And what about you? What kind of cookies are you selling? Toasties. 
did you say, oh. how can you say no? And the t-shirts. Uh, when I go in, I go all in, much to my husband's chagrin, <laughs> right, when these credit card bills start rolling in with all the marketing and uh, But her sisters it. are only five, and so they are not in Girl Scouts yet. And um, they genuinely believe they are Girl Scouts. They want to do everything <laughs> Bailey does. So we're like, we're, and they loved handing out the cookies last oh, cool. year. Brielle is our very aggressive one who had ah. to press all the doorbells and take all the money last year. <laughs> and this and is awesome too because <laughs> you've talked about it, yeah. the mission for the girls. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not just it's not just selling you know cookies. The money goes right back to the troop a certain amount of cents mm -hmm. you know from every dollar. And we do a lot of fun activities, but. We try to give back to our community. So my girls go to the De Pere School District. We did a really successful toy drive in the fall um, for the holidays for families who were in need in De Pere, nice. um, toys for them. And then we're also building a little library um, that you see in a park Aww. in Ledgeview, $2 Park. And then, you know, to, to celebrate their season, we're also looking at doing an overnight experience at Lambeau Field. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> makes, wow. It, makes it exciting. And Cookie you're just season. starting at this. I love this. Yeah, you are so, Kristen, <laughs> you're one of the most organized people we know. <laughs> Thank you. I try. <laughs> well, I wish them luck with Thank the. Thank you so and We much. all wish them luck. I'm sure they'll have a lot of success just right here at the station. Yeah, yeah that's always, Bill Jarts is my number one customer. There you go. So. <laughs> wait, wait, Cammie, Cammie yeah. just heard, Cammie, Bill, are you I watching? don't see your name on the paper yet. <laughs> There's a competition. Yeah. <laughs> see, and this is the kind of fun stuff that we want to yeah. let you in on behind the scenes, like mm -hmm. with our with our live stream here. Yeah. We the don't secrets. have this much time yeah. to talk yeah. about it when right. we're on TV, right? right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, Kristen, thank you so yeah, much. Thank you so much. And here in the studio, they're getting ready for their cut-in on GMA mm -hmm. that's coming up in about a minute and a half. So we're going to give you a bird's eye view yeah. here. Tammy's going to fill I'm gonna it up. I'm going to order the cookies. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks awesome. for joining us. See ya.